me cheese for my mother and it wasn't recording. So now we're a wee bit messed. But we have a saviour. We do have a saviour. That saviour is me. And that challenge is actually making another roux sauce that I'm going to freeze. But while my extra pasta is boiling for my original roux sauce, let's get into this. So you'll need 50 grams of butter, 50 grams of plain flour, and 500 ml of milk. And a whisk and cheese. So, I'm doing a smaller amount since this is just a freezable one. Put that on that. I'm um, just checking my hoppers on there. Um, so I'm kind of eyeballing mine a wee bit, which is fine. Um, but yes, I would stick to the measurements. Um, I'm obviously just doing this because I messed up. So don't do a Kathleen. Don't forget to film. Um, I'm going to get some tubs up. So, once the butter is nice and melted, like mine nearly is, you get your flour. I actually left the spoon in there. I'm a genius. You get your flour. And you pop it in. Give it a good mixy mix. As I said, this is a very small amount of roux sauce I'm making. I need just a smidge more flour so I can show you guys what it's supposed to look like. So yeah, if you just whisk your flour in your butter till it's like that, make sure that all the flour is soaked up in the butter. Grab your milk and slowly add in bits of milk at a time. Uh, take it up, make sure to take it on and off the heat. I did that very wrong there. You're actually supposed to take it off the heat, add in the milk, pop it back on, and don't stop whisking. That is a key thing with this sauce. You are constantly, constantly whisking. Um, I didn't actually even get out the tub for my sauce. I just realised I don't think that's going to fit in this tub. But that's okay, I'll pop it in another tub. It'll be fine. Are you okay, Pasta? Do you need a moment to chill? Right, so I've actually managed to do exactly what I wanted to do, which was I've made it waterier. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to bring it over though. Waterier than I would normally have it. And that is only because when you add in the cheese, it thickens up. So I put in a little bit of mustard powder that I spilt on my very clean counter. Not the best idea I've ever had. A little bit of paprika. Because this is such a small amount, I'm just gonna add in not even a full teaspoon of garlic. Yeah, done the mustard, the paprika. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper and a little bit of Italian seasoning. Right, so now that I've added that in, go back over to the heat, whisk it all in, make sure it's all fully mixed up. Now again, this has thickened up again since. So always, if you've got spare milk, Keep the spare milk out because you never know when you might actually need it. Because you could end up putting your cheese in and it could be too thick. You could end up putting multiple cheeses in and it could be too thick. So, yeah, I am now just going to grate some cheese. Now, the great thing about a roux sauce is you can freeze it. 
you can freeze a roux sauce you can use it for macaroni and cheese you can use it i have used it in lasagna um you can use it for broccoli cauliflower cheese it is one of those wonderful cheese sauces that can be used for anything and you can do anything with obviously i've told you the seasonings i add in some people don't add in any seasonings some people add in salt it is entirely up to you as i said about the milk you add your cheese in i added in too much cheese it's gone a bit thick so i'm just going to add in more milk that was a lot of milk but that's okay yeah. sprinkle some hard cheese on in there too just for the flavour and don't worry if you have made it too watery it thickens up really quickly and really easily which is nice I do have to quickly grab the spoon and stir my pasta thought before that happens yep there we go so yeah the goal at the end for me anyway is my sauce look nice and cheesy like that that's the goal so that's the one I made earlier when I thought I was filming and I actually was not um, I'll just turn that off now actually because that still retains heat see already I have a nice thickened up sauce that took what two minutes and we're just going to try it because tasting is good it's good apparently everything's just out to attack me today yeah. oh yeah i approve of that sauce let me actually try that one too mm -hmm. this is a good cheese sauce Good cheese sauce. So now that we've made that, as I said, add it to macaroni. I'm gonna sit mine to the side just now till I check my pasta and I'll show you me tubbing up the one I pre-did for mum. Obviously when I've cooked my pasta I've salted the pasta as well. So there is always that. Um grab you, grab you clean up my mustard powder that I spilled earlier trying to get into the mustard so be careful of what mustard you have I'm actually just used to normal mustard um, so evidently I wasn't very good with mustard powder now I'm going to get a wee tub out so that I can the wrong square for that oh but that one goes with that one see perfect i have a little square tub so i'm just gonna grab my spoon that's my pasta spoon i chucked my teaspoon away it's okay so i'm just gonna grab my spoon and empty my cheese sauce this tub now i love i honestly do love the fact mm. that's a really cheesy cheese sauce actually really cheesy um i love the fact that you can freeze roux so um, hey no falling out in you go there we go now it's in the freezer. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> yeah, but as I said, roux can be used for anything. I find them great macaroni and cheese. Um, I find them great for a lot of things, actually. My boyfriend's favourite, and I did it... I did it for Christmas, actually. Was the broccoli cauliflower cheese with the roux sauce. I now officially can't have a roast dinner at my boyfriend's or any kind of proper dinner without broccoli cauliflower cheese like as long as we have the ingredients to make it i'm making it because he's obsessed obsessed with it 
So I'm just waiting on my pasta at this point. Because as I said, too much cheese sauce, not enough pasta in here. So yeah. But it's wonderful. So my macro cheese is actually just pastas, pasta, onions and sweet corn. Because well that was what I had. So that's what's gone into it. Um, but yeah, as you can see, making a roux sauce is super easy. And of course you can add the seasonings you want to. You don't have to use the ones I use. Use your own. Um, you can freeze it. You can add in a multitude of different cheeses. You can add in one cheese. You can do it however your little heart desires. And that is what we love. We love adaptable cooking. Adaptable cooking is amazing because... You know, you can just, it's not just what works for you, it can work for everything. So, yeah. Hopefully my pasta will be ready in a wee minute and I can, I'll show you it all properly in the tub and dishing it up. Watch Kettle Never Boils, Kathleen. <laughs> so, yeah. But, you know, I've been making roux sauces since I was like 10. I was one of the only people to be able to make a roux sauce when it came to home economics in school. Everybody else was learning how to do it, I already knew how to do it. Funnily enough, it was my mother that taught me, but my home ec teacher taught my mother. So that was a nice full round circle that, to be fair, my mother and I had the same home ec teacher and the same business management teacher, although it wasn't called business management. In mum's time, she did economics. And I did business management, but it was the same teacher. And what I didn't realise till my last year of school, when we were doing the parent te teacher conference thing, I actually sat in the exact same seat as my mother. Completely different school building, but we both sat on the side of the door in the back corner. How weird. I'm just checking my pastas ready. Sorry if it gets a bit steamy for you guys, right? Now I'm just going to bung it in. This is literally how simple it is. Bung it in. And then mix it in. So we get all that cheesy, saucy goodness. Excuse you. <laughs> That'll be my pasta trying to run away. But yeah, I mean, by all means, if you add other veg into your macaroni and cheese, do so. Because normally, to be fair, I would add in peas. But it was hard enough trying to find the onion in my house, let alone the peas. That my house, my freezer. So I'm just going to tub up a nice big tub of this for my mother. So obviously, as you can see, I have a load left. But for cooling purposes... That lid's going to be mad. That lid's way too big. That lid's going to work. That lid might be a bit too big too. That is way too big. Uh, how about that one? I feel like that one might be on the small side. So no, it fits right. So now I'm just going to plop a lid on top of it. It's not on the heat. But that is a beautiful portion of my mother's macaroni cheese that I'm taking to work for her. But for all intents and purposes, I'm just going to watch this video and be like, hey, you ate my macaroni cheese. There's a load left for when I come back in from work, so. Mm. The tips I would give you, definitely use fresh milk, better with whole milk. Um, even adding a little bit of cream. I've added in a little bit of cream at the end and it's been quite nice. But yes, I hope you've enjoyed this little cooking segment. And I'll see you again later. Bye guys.